every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen, in the goddamn refrigerator. I sure am hungry. Yo, 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 welcome back everybody to the Morning Dinner Podcast episode number 31. I can't believe we made it this far, bro. Uh, but it's your boy Keem and uh, my co-host Chuck. Want to say hi, Chuck? What's good, y'all? Um, and today, on today's special episode, we have our buddy Dawson. Yes. What's what good? What's good? Want to give the people a little intro, man? Um, first of all, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Um, a little intro, I guess. You know, I go by Dawson. I'm 23-year-old audio engineer and producer. Um... Born in California, raised in Arizona, lived in Hawaii for like four years. Now I reside here since like 2014. Okay, so you haven't been out here your whole life? No, nah, just like the past four years and everything. Uh, came out here to pursue audio engineering and everything, and that's kind of what I've been doing so far. Uh, I own a studio, Junction Sound, music production studio. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 been my thing. We, we, no. we, we've had a lot of people on this uh, podcast that are artists. And uh, I, f- I figured I, like, I had to reach out to you to get you on here because it's always good to have the perspective of an audio engineer as well. Right. I feel you know, it. I feel um, it. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a couple episodes and stuff. You've actually interviewed a couple people that I've worked with. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who have you worked with that we've had on? Um, J Word, It's Ray, I guess, Chels. Um, I'm not sure who, who else I've seen on there, mm-hmm. but I think it was mainly yeah. those three. Yeah. Uh, All dope Zach, people, I haven't got the chance to work with Zach yet, but I was just listening to the podcast on the way over here and shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dope. You know what's you, crazy is a lot of the people that, we have, that we've had on here, uh, some of them, it's been like the first time that we met them. Like, just like you. Like, this okay, is the yeah. first time I meet you. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. So it's always like a fun experience to get, see kind of how, how people react. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's man. It's so, interesting, man. So, so, so you're an audio engineer, right? Yeah. How, what got you interested into audio engineering? Like, what was what was that moment that you were like, okay, I want to mix music? Um, the moment I wanted to mix music, like, it started off first like I was a a, a rapper as an artist in a, a group in Hawaii. We all just started making music, and I was the one putting everything together. So engineering kind of just like was put in my lap. And then uh, when I decided that I wanted to do it, was probably like my senior year so I've already been doing it for a couple years once I found out that this is an actual career because when I was doing it I was just like just doing it I didn't know this was a thing like yeah you can get paid for this like yeah. this is an actual occupation you and can shit. make money what so That's I found fair. out you could do that then I, I looked up schools to go to and then I found this school called recording connection and uh I wanted to wait till I moved out from Hawaii to to do the school because I just felt like um for what I wanted to do like the opportunities weren't that good in Hawaii mm-hmm. for you know music production and everything like that, especially in the hip hop realm. Which was I was gonna what say, I was interested damn, that's crazy. I was gonna yeah. say, how's the hip hop scene yeah, in Hawaii? I, no, I never even no heard idea. of the hip hop scene out yeah, there. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, it's. I'm not sure what it's like now. I haven't been there for four years, but yeah. from what I see, it looks like it's growing. I know on Oahu, which is like the city island, uh, there's kind of a scene out there, and I see them doing shows, and like it looks turned. And they've been able to crowd surf and shit. So it's like, okay, it looks like it's growing. Yeah. Um, but I was on the Big Island, and the Big Island's like more of a secluded island, and it's not the city island where there's not a lot of stuff to do. So the hip hop scene was like, I thought I was starting the shit when I moved there. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm about to start this movement out here, yeah, Hawaii yeah. hip hop. I so culture and all that is still like upcoming and whatnot in that area? Um, No, I mean, I feel like they might be a little bit behind on like uh, hip hop culture, just a little bit, but mm-hmm. not too much. I think it's it's there, you know, it's just as modern as it is anywhere else, mm-hmm. you know. Um, But I don't think it's too far behind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, so you mentioned uh, you wanted to come out here for uh, school, right? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What what school did you end up going to? It was, you said it was called Recording Connection? Yeah, Recording Connection. Huh. So it's like, um, it's a different kind of school. Like, they pay studios to teach you hands-on. Mm-hmm. So it's like a pretty much a sp- expensive-ass internship with an online curriculum, you know? Mm-hmm. Is it um, kind of like the conservatory out um, in Phoenix? Uh, no, because the, they actually have a university, right? Like an actual know. campus. I'm pretty sure. I think my old roommate went there. I was trying to go there like way long, like 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was, but the thing was, they didn't offer in, you a degree. In Arizona, right? Yeah, yeah. They didn't offer you a degree. It was like a certificate of, certificate of completion, I think it was. Yeah. 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 I think it's a university because you had to go in Arizona. This one will work with you like wherever you're at. They'll just okay. like find a studio that's in the city or the closest city you're in mm-hmm. and then like pay them to teach you hands-on pretty much. What? Wait, so, so the, yeah. the, the, the college pays them? Pays but the then, studio. But then you pay for the tuition, you pay them and back. And I pay the college, yeah. Damn, that's kind of tight. Yeah. It was a, yeah. It's a cool way. Like, I like the way of learning. Um, I feel like the studio I got paired up with wasn't, like, I love Camel Hump Studio. Shout out to Camel Hump. Oh, Trivion. Yeah. Trivion yeah, and, yeah, uh, That was my mentor when I yeah. first got here. Oh, T-Snack, yeah? yeah. John Brown, yeah. 
uh, those are like the two I, I co-owners. Inter- I interned with them too, bro. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so, it was, I was going to the, the Art Institute. Okay. Yeah, bad move. <laughs> but uh, n- enough, enough about that. I feel that. like a lot of schools are bad moves nowadays. Yeah, man. Like, it's if just, you're not, especially if you're coming out of pocket like or, or taking out loans and shit like that, I just don't feel like it's the way to go. Mm-hmm. Unless oh, yeah. it's free. Like, unless you're going to college for free, then by all means, yeah, go Nothing for it. Nothing in this country is free, bro. I mean, I went to, I got paid to go to college from FAFSA. Like, I got money back when I was going to college what? for one year. Wait, yeah. did, you were never military though, right? No. Damn. I was just... Very I was I'm I'm going poor. backwards here, bro. <laughs> That's crazy, so man. So they gave me a lot and like it paid for my classes. I had literally like twelve hundred dollars left over from FAFSA that I could spend on whatever. Whoa, yeah, that's so. Crazy. Damn, that's dope, man. Yeah. In my case, it, it did. So if you yeah. don't have a situation like that, I would just go to YouTube, bro. Yeah, and learn the shit. And just Wait, so so you so it. so you yeah. wouldn't recommend like going to college for um, audio engineering? It depends if you on your situation. You know, if you have the financial funds to do it, then mm. yeah. And you think I think school environments are are always good and helpful you know to be around other people who are like trying to learn the same shit i think that part of it is good i don't think being taught by a teacher who didn't make it in that industry is is oh yeah you know it's yeah. not the right way to like you know what i'm you know what i'm saying like and especially if it's going to put you in debt to go there and stuff like that and it's yeah. like something that you're probably never it's not even going to get you a job that can help you pay that debt off oh yeah you know that's, if it does get you a job it's not that's gonna... when i'm like okay maybe there's another option yeah. and, and it's like there is another option like it's 2018 you know it's the information age yeah, man you know you can learn everything online yeah everything yeah especially if people like myself included like get, getting yourself into into that kind of debt is crazy bro yeah you know especially when 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 jobs when when you go looking for like an audio engineering job it's they don't really look at degrees i would i would assume unless you're going for like a like a i would assume like a motion picture jo- job where you're working at like a disney studios or like fox and they're like okay well we need these kinds of certifications that you can do this or that or whatever no, mainly but, just looking for experience I feel yeah like. i feel like that's 99 percent of the uh of the uh the workforce out there is like you got to be experienced you got to have hands on yeah. like if you never went to college but if you work for like you you work with like Ali or something like that, like mixed by Ali. It's who or you know, like man. Yeah, right, right, right. like, like who cares what school you went to if it sounds good? Absolutely, is it is who you know. By the way, yes. yeah. it, it is who 100%. you know. Yeah. Oh, well, that's with everything though. Mm-hmm. Every yeah, yeah, that's that's like yeah. yeah. That's the king of all. If anybody wants to know out there, <laughs> it's who you know. Wait, so who's your biggest uh, audio engineering influence? Um, you say? Ali is definitely one of them, and I got the opportunity to go out to his first uh, Seeing Sounds event. Oh, that's what which it was. was. Super fucking crazy. Um, but let me answer the question before I get into that story. Um, <laughs> I would say uh, 40, Young Guru, Mike Dean, um, Mixed by Ali, uh, Kai, Kai Engineering, um, Alex Tumay. Pretty much the people who are like really popping and doing shit right now mm-hmm. in the music scene. Like I'm, I'm always like, you know, I pay more attention to the mixes than I do the artists. So yeah, like, those are like the people I'm looking for and like looking at their mixes and like seeing how they're doing shit and yeah i feel like outside of the audio engineering world like nobody really under nobody really knows audio engineers like that you know what i mean it's always like the artist that gets the shine yeah but it's like if you look at like dr dre like he's known for producing and you know and then you know like you wouldn't you wouldn't have known ali if it wasn't for kendrick lamar doing as big as he did you know what i mean and then you know attaching his name to to it and and then recognizing that he has such a distinct sound right uh but yeah absolutely but I feel like um, now, more than ever, engineers are kind of like getting, stepping more into the spotlight. Yeah. And they're getting a little more of that star power. The fact that Ali is able to do something like this and do a master class and have people from all over the world fly in to like learn from him, mm-hmm. that just kind of like shows. Oh, it was a like, master class? Yeah. Like, Damn, uh, that's he, tight. he deconstructed like a Pro Tools mix. Um, I think he did Big Shot with Kendrick Lamar yeah. and uh, Travis Scott. So Damn, he did a live Pro Tools yeah, deconstruction. We had the computer so right there in front of us. Yeah. So and we can go through the session ourselves and everything, and and really just kind of broke it down. I feel like we didn't get too much into the technical part because like, I mean it was a class of like 30, 35 people, and like a lot of people is not on the same level as engineers. So like they had a lot of questions, and that kind of like took up a lot of time. And I'm mm-hmm. like kind so of like was- waiting. Okay, like but how did you do this? And it's like oh someone's got this question. And, so, so but was I the, still, it was still an amazing experience. Kendrick Lamar walked in the fucking room. Oh shit! Like as we're discussing his vocals that's and tight. shit. So that shit was fucking that's crazy tight. right there. Like, Wait, yeah. so and who, we got to ask him questions and like see how their relationship was and how they worked together. And yeah, that shit's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say the class was more uh, like theory based or what? Because you said it wasn't very technical, right? Yeah, I feel like the first half was more of like an introduction and it was just kind of like getting to know him and mm-hmm. just asking him, uh, you know, certain questions like that. Um, 
and then we we took a break but i felt like that half like i already knew who he was like that's why i'm here like i've seen all your interviews already so like that part you know yeah not useless i mean i love i love the shit and you yeah know, um but it was kind of like eh. then the second half uh i felt like we were just pressed for time i felt like they were rushing things and it's like mixing takes a lot of time mm -hmm. so um so we it was like a two hour in the beginning that we took a break real quick and then came back for like another two hours and you're supposed to deconstruct the mix in two hours like mm -hmm. and we now have when all these you questions say, and stuff like that when you say deconstruct the mix how do you mean so it's like go through it from step by step where do you start how do you end so it's like but the vocals are already recorded so this is just mixing done, wise yeah, yeah everything is done the whole beat is tracked out all the vocals are done recording. Mm -hmm. There's no recording or editing that needs to be done. It's just, you know, mixing it, getting mm -hmm. the frequencies and the spacing and all that, everything, the levels and everything to sound right. Mm. Everything. How, wait, so how, do you, total, total how, how long would you say you've been, like, interested in, in mixing music and doing all that stuff? Because um, you said you started out as, as an artist. You were, you were doing music, right? You were doing rap music. Uh -huh. uh, and were you mixing for your, for your friends as well or...? Yeah, I was mixing. Yeah, I was mixing for myself and the group and everything. And that started probably when I was like, like sixteen. So like six, going on seven years. Oh man, so it's, you've been in it then? Yeah. Okay. And then like I would say with Pro Tools and like actually running sessions and stuff for the past four years mm -hmm. since I moved here, pretty much. It's pretty interesting because your because your 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 last name is Dawson, right? Yep. But so it's Daw, like digital <laughs> hey, audio yeah. workstation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you I, that. Bro, yeah. I feel like that would have been the moment you're like, ah, oh, this is meant to be. <laughs> yes, it was, bro. I swear to God, it took me forever to come up with my logo and everything like that, and I drew it out and like you know you have, have the slash of the O, and yeah, that's kind of like my trademark and everything. And if you look on like uh, analog EQs and compressors, like a lot of them have that. That symbol, it's like an O with a slash in it. Dude, it's, like it's a, crazy because cameras have order. that too. Yeah, yeah. It what is the, it? It flips. I know in audio, it flips the phase yeah, of the yeah. signal. So if it's going this way, it's doing the opposite. Yeah, yeah. It's, it much. inverts the the, it inverts the wave. The yeah. wave. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so there was that, and then just sound by Dawson. You know, sound is singular, and sound is what I do. And the DB next to each other. That's you know, that's, that's how you measure sound decibels, and then Daw yeah. and the O with the slash was like the whole name. Sound by Dawson has like its own little yeah little thing. It's pretty once, tight. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's yeah. super simple, and it took me forever. And I was like, it was really like, fuck, I guess this is all I can come up with. Yeah. Sound by Dawson. And then I seen it, and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. That works. That's hard. Bro, it's I one, was born to do this so, shit. So it's, it's one of those things that you kind of like got acclimated to. Like, I remember looking at my name, bro, Kimi Barra. I used to hate it, bro. I was like, nobody's name, Kimi Barra. That's so weird. And like, over the years, I'm like, damn, I kind of like it now. People, like, people tell me, like, it, it's unique, and that's, what, that's what's cool about it. Yeah. But yeah, de it definitely takes time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and it's usually just like the simplest shit. Like, you you usually overthink shit like that. Yeah. So so okay. So you use Pro Tools right now, which is your main DAW. But what was your first DAW, son? My first DAW. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say it was like some really cheap ass audio software called WavePad. Damn, bro. Anything with yeah. like pad. WavePad. <laughs> WavePad. <laughs> And then it was Audacity. And then... What, you used Wavepad before Audacity? I know, right? Audacity's free, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Audacity is usually the first one. I, I just... It was the first thing I found on Google was Wavepad. Really, it was like, yeah, let's we'll start with Wavepad. I, I think it's funny how <laughs> everybody starts on like the most random projects, like right. most random pieces of software, bro. Yeah. Like I started editing Audacity. video. I started editing video on Windows Movie Maker. Like, yeah, same what, here. What, you you yeah. too, bro? <laughs> I feel like that was what was available to everybody who was just starting, like... Yeah, because I started on that one. Pe well. People, people always ask like, "What's the best software to use?" Right? Like, do you, do you ever get that question? Yeah, and it's I, th it's whatever you like. Yeah, yeah, because essentially all of them do the same. You know, like Mixcraft, that which was next that I started on, and then FL Studio, and then Pro Tools. Like they all essentially do the same thing. Yeah, you know, it's just which one do you. So prefer? why do you guys use Pro Tools? It's overall? the industry standard. Yeah, yeah. Is it just like is it it's easy to like, use? It's in or? every single major studio. Mm -hmm. So. It's just the standard that they. Yeah. Have. I would, I that's what say, I was told was the standard, and yeah, then it is. It uh, is. when I signed up for recording connections, they gave me a copy. So it just I'm, went from I'm there. Pro Tools. I'm Pro yeah. Tools all day. Because I just, day, and I, love I it. just see it as like Premiere. You know what I mean? But the industry standard back in the day was Avid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. For video editing, it still is pretty big. But Avid? I was Avid was the. I think so, wasn't it? It was like a Avid, big, big, Avid Media Composer. It was like one of the biggest. It's ones. It's because like, it's it's, that, it's the same company Avid from Pro Tools. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. like well, so whenever so they were, they were so when, whenever whenever you see like an episode of Game of Thrones, uh -huh. it was it was edited in uh in Avid Media Composer and they use Pro Tools to make the uh -huh. sound. 
Yeah. It was funny because I never knew what the too. fuck it was. I was like, what is Avid? Because he was using it. I was using that shit in college, like, bro. Yeah, I hate using Avid, man. <laughs> it, Avid, though, like I love Pro Tools. I think the last one I used was Pro Tools 9. Uh, but Avid, Avid, I couldn't do it, man. It was just, it just, it didn't look fun to use, man. And that's when I went to Final Cut and uh, Final Cut, then I went to Premiere. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Avid, Avid Media Composer does not look fun, man. It just, it's got the most bland tools. Like, it just doesn't look fun. It, right. looks, it looks like work. It looks like <laughs> no, a Microsoft piece of software. You know, that makes a big difference, too, like the interface. And like, Pro Tools at least at, has yeah. color in it, man. They got yeah. the, you know, that you can do, like, uh, the labels and all that stuff. Right. You can't do I that. I feel like they found a good medium of, like, colorful, but still, like... Professional. Like, professional, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But you could technically mix and master in, like, FL Studio or any of those DAWs, yeah. basically. Oh, yeah. okay. I think what makes it superior is uh the recording like the playlist and the editing and like mm -hmm. how easy it is to like the workflow is just, just really yeah, good the workflow is mm -hmm. like, but then again you know it's just like some people are quick with fl you know ableton <laughs> is another one that i like but those are like the main three that i yeah. really fuck with is fl ableton and, and pro tools yeah i i always i always preach this bro like it's not about the tool it's how you use it yeah you know I mean, there's people they, out there who who use can, their phone there's no there's people out there who use their phone and make a better beat than somebody who's got ten, tens of thousands of dollars of equipment mm -hmm. right you know like look, look at uh what steve steven lacy yeah steve, steve lacy uses his he produces on me. his iphone or his ipad bro and, and he's I got grammy Madlib. nominated like <laughs> yeah you know madlib still just uses an ipad now I who's think, who's, who's a madlib really? yeah i think so because he's like i don't want equipment he's like i'm an og i've been doing this shit for years right? i can do yeah. whatever i want <laughs> like, I, I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody <laughs> exactly wait so you moved out here in vegas you did the uh the recording connection where you started uh interning for camel hump right yeah how was that experience man like how, how would you say that helped and be better your hands-on i think uh it definitely helped a lot because they kind of just like threw me in like i already had prior experience so i knew how to record and i had like interpersonal like skills so i could talk to people and it's not awkward mm -hmm. and so they kind of just like threw me in like at first i like they would throw me in and then like they would be like kind of like in the office and like i would run the session by myself and eventually like I, I just got to a point where they didn't even need to come in and mix it afterwards. So mm -hmm. they were just like, just, they hired me on at that point before I even finished the the program and everything. It was cool. The only thing, the reason why uh, I, I came into recording connections kind of early. So I didn't, I feel like they may not have known other studios out here to do it. Mm -hmm. But like, I know people who are doing it now who are in like hundred thousand dollar studios. Yeah. Camel Hump, you've been there, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was not a hundred thousand equipment <laughs> studio, but it's a real homey environment. I love it. Like the the people there, like were good engineers, good producers there. It was always it was a, a good, good vibe. Yeah, it yeah. was a good homey environment where you could feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was really cool. But you know, you know, just something has got out of hand and everything. You know, yeah. like the wrong type of people, the wrong type of clientele comes in. And are know, are they still at that same location? Um, no. Uh, John and Triv uh, gave up ownership to somebody else. So oh, okay. They're, they're oh, really? Doing, they're doing something at Siri like Sirius XM. You know, uh, doing some streaming thing for like sports. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. what? Oh, I didn't even know they were done. Yeah. That's crazy. I think Triv still does like mixing sessions and, and recording sessions, but I'm not sure like where he's working out of or anything. Okay. So, so you did your, uh, your internship, yep. which you just said you paid for because you were going to college and they paid them and you were essentially paying for it to be an intern, right? Because yep. when I did it, when I did it, it was through the, it was through the school and I, I, I like to say I didn't pay. But I'm paying for it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So okay. So you so you, so so you graduated from there. You you uh you then started your own studio at, at uh, Junction Sound. Yep. How did that happen? That happened. Um. So I just got back tr from a trip from New York, visiting my dad's side of the family for the first time. I was feeling really motivated, and um, this was. I just got back, and this is the second time I'm about to quit my job and do audio engineering full time. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And not knowing what was really going to happen, you know, I made a bunch of sacrifices, you know, lowered my expenses monthly as I could. And I figured, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm able to make, you know, it was under a thousand what I had to make every month. And I was like, I'm sure I can make this on engineering alone. Yeah. I was close to the studio. So I was like, I'm just going to take the bus. I ended up selling my car because it was a piece Damn. of shit anyways. So I was like, whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, so I was just taking the bus. And then um, <clears throat> I met Tanes. And... Tenes, shout uh, out to Tenes. Yes, shout out to Tenes, the never ending story. Shout yeah. out to you know, uh, Doppelbangers, yeah. you know. <laughs> I need a new shirt. This one's this one's cracking, bro. <laughs> lace me up nah, bro, it's vintage hey, now, bro. Yeah. It's vintage it now. <laughs> You know, there's people that pay extra for that for that texture, bro. <laughs> right. You know, what I mean? yeah, kind of like when you see people like with ripped jeans, like, I get new, right. I get new yeah, pair of like, jeans. It's this, distressed. This is dead it's stock, distressed. bro. <laughs> but, nah, just because they're ripped, just because they're faded, that means you can raise the price now. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But yeah, so Tanes, uh, he had the Junction Complex, which was basically like a creative complex. There was a bunch of different things in there. He had the store, like a dance studio, like a think tank, an art studio. And there was a recording studio in there before, and then the people left uh, on bad terms. I'm not really sure like what happened, mm -hmm. but they trashed the place when they left. Like, so the cameras to the walls and everything. Damn. Mm -hmm. And so he originally had me coming in to because he was rebuilding a team for a Tuesday Blend. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I was there. I just didn't know it at the time. And then when that happened, I was like, yeah, of course. You know, like I, I seen a position for a uh, talent coordinator, and like they handle all the emails and stuff. And I just quit. I'm looking for clientele, you know, yeah. like for, for artists that are in Vegas and like this is this email submission where artists in Vegas are yeah. submitting to. So I was like, it's a win-win. Oh, <laughs> That's dope. I love perfect. Like, yeah, shit just happens to like when you quit your job and you and you found your purpose, like and you just make shit happen, you move like it's crazy how the world would just open up for you and just line up. But um, he had that room in there. And like every time I would go there, I would literally walk in that room and I would just like. I just knew it was gonna happen, bro. Yeah, I was. I knew it was gonna happen. It was a Wait, matter so, of time. So, so they had the studio already in there. There was a studio there before. Okay. And then whoever was in there before, like, left and like they left on bad terms and took hammers to like the booth that they built, mm -hmm. not the actual walls, but like the booth that they built. They they took it all down. Damn, dude. Yeah, yeah. You got crackheads running that place, man. Oh, yeah. What the oh, hell? They, they left on yeah really like, bad geez. terms. Damn. And stuff. Um, and then, you know, so I started buying. Uh, I literally spent like my entire savings, which is like something you know you're not supposed to do after you just quit your job yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's your something. cushion bro but i don't know man i just did it and then i started buying all this equipment before he had said anything you know mm -hmm. you know i was just buying interfaces and mics and, and speakers and, and all this stuff mm -hmm. before he had gave me the go and then one day he just pulled me aside he's like hey if we rebuild the studio do you want to manage it and i was like hell fucking yeah i'm way ahead of you already yeah. I've, I've, already, <laughs> I've already been buying equipment bro so um and then um, I met Zelly Vibes also through Tuesday Blend, and uh, her dad is a contractor and helped build the the booth and everything. And oh, nice! That created our relationship. That's still now today that we still work together. Okay. And everything like that, and then boom, Junction Sound was born. And that's in uh, China Chinatown, right? Yep, that was in Chinatown. Is that <clears throat> it? Was or? was in Chinatown. Oh, okay. Yes. Moved. Uh, yeah, we moved. Yeah. Oh, okay. Moved to downtown Arts District. Um. Yeah, Tanes uh, is uh, opening up a new venue in downtown Arts District called CMXX. Mm -hmm. There was mm -hmm. a little soft opening uh, this past summer, so I don't know if you guys have heard about it or yeah. not. Oh, yeah, been there we yet. know everybody down oh, there, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it, they're doing they, like they, a, they do a lot of photography events down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so they're doing like an official opening, and now he just kind of wanted to like uh, put all of his focus in that, so they kind of uh, closed down Junction Complex just to refocus everything on CMXX, and mm. then we uh, opened up junction sound downtown arts district and that's where it's at now and so how, how long total have oh. you been there at junction sound um a year and like a couple months it oh. was march 2017 and is it just you right now or is it yeah it's just me yeah. just you yeah. so you run all the studio sessions all of them so yeah. you're there 24 7 then, huh? all the fucking time. damn bro 12 to 12 you have a studio sessions tonight um no actually oh, okay. uh, but i just <laughs> I came like, from one yeah yeah nice. I was working with Tej and moose moose is working on a project sick shout out to Tiege. moose the coolest hey I know <laughs> the coolest. Yeah, shout out to Tej. yes so yeah. you record with a lot of artists uh yeah. have you ever record with, recorded with somebody that you've never even met before yeah all the time all the time yeah like i mean like like has there has there ever been like a weird vibe between I'm, you and somebody you've, you've oh never, like, like a weird vibe how yeah like, like, have you ever had somebody, well, this was going to be one of my questions down the road, but I was like, have you ever, like, what, what's, what's your biggest, like, pet peeve when you have somebody recording that kind of, like, goes like, ah, oh, damn. You know, I feel like this is always a tough question to answer. Um, hmm. I would just say, like, I don't know. Um, I like when people are excited about their work and they don't expect me to be excited for them. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate when an artist relies too much on my input mm -hmm. you know because at the end of the day like my job is to, is to take your vision and what you want and what you're excited about your passion and and bring that to reality not like what i want even though i know a lot of them now come to me because they trust my opinion yeah and everything but when i'm doing too much of that it's it just becomes it just becomes yeah it's like if you don't want to do this then i don't want to do this yeah you know what i'm saying oh damn that's real <laughs> i understand Crazy. you're paying me but like i'm also at the point where i'm doing something that i love so it's like even if i wasn't getting paid i'd still be doing this yeah so have you ever turned somebody down for a session that you just didn't want to record or was it or do you just take on like whoever comes through or how, how does that work out because because you, you you do online booking right you have like your your website mm -hmm. where people can book a session through online and even yeah. if you don't know them or what time they're gonna book 
that goes completely uh, you know at your discretion have you ever turned down a session that you that you're like okay i don't want to work with that person <laughs> um not for those reasons usually if it's a paid session and everything like mm-hmm. there has there'd have to be some kind of good reason like maybe another opportunity come up came up and i and i had to do something else but i don't think i've ever turned anybody down just because like nah because that, that, that was one of the things is like when i when i was audio engineering um i would have people first of all i was in my mom's basement <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would have people base. come through and they would like completely just smell like weed and it was like they were drinking and doing drugs and i was like uh kind of don't want that kind of clientele so i had to turn that kind of things do you, do you feel like you have that kind of freedom to just have anybody come in at, with any any kind of background yeah but i feel like um those type of clientele don't really come to me anymore Really? I feel like um, I'm not sure how that happened either because I know it started off like that. And I feel like it's really just the environment that you're in like, mm-hmm. uh, or just like uh, where you're getting your clientele from. Because at first I was putting ads on Craigslist, you know, and I was getting a lot of ty- those type of clients and everything. But I was also getting a lot of good clients. Yeah. Like really good clients off Cla- Craigslist. So I was like um, kind of trippy. But like Camel Hunt, for instance, you know, it's like this this homey environment and everything. And, uh, um, you know, if you... you if you invite the wrong clientele in, you know, like it, the the place can get kind of like, I don't know how to put it in words. I really don't want to put their business out there. That's kind of yeah. why I'm like backtracking everything I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, but, feel like, um, I feel like that was one of the things too, man. I feel like, like I just don't attract those type of people, you know? Yeah. When people like see my work and like uh, see my vibe and the, or they just come to the studio or they see my interview or something like that, like I'm attracting a certain type of people. Right. You know? And that's just how I feel. But I do get those clients. You know, I had people from New York come in the other day and they tried to like lowball me and everything. They booked four hours and then like a couple hours before their session, they're like, oh, we can only do two. I only have $70. And I was like, okay, I can do the two hours, but it's 90. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, okay, cool. I was like, all right, bet. So I came there and then we did the session. And then it's the end of the session. And he's like, oh, I only got 70. And I was oh, like, my. yeah, <laughs> reading was 90. He's like, no, nah, bro, you said it was cool. I was like, no, I know I didn't because I wouldn't have took the session for 70. Like, I just wouldn't have done that. So, but he tried to tell me that's what I said and everything. And then he left. He came back and, like, gave me $8. He's like, here, bro, that's all I got. Damn. So I got $78 from a session. I yeah. still gave him their files and everything. Like, I wasn't really tripping. but Because I knew they were going to be back. And they mm-hmm. were, you know. And I, and then that it, it didn't work out. They were probably not going to work together again. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, uh, do people ever, like, cancel on you? Yeah, all the time. But the thing is, like, if they book online with you, they do they have to drop a deposit or how do, how does that work? No, I kind of stay away from the deposits. I feel like it kind of like prevents people from booking in the first place. You think so? Yeah, I don't like know scares why. Scares them away. Yeah, I feel like people are just afraid to drop that money down beforehand. Like a lot of the time, I'll wait till after the session before I I take the payment. Yeah. Because I mean, like like I said, I'm gonna be here regardless. I do this shit. You know, I love That's to so do tight, this man. shit. That's so tight, man. That's know? respect. It so really it's shows, like, like how much you love. I really it. do this shit. So it's like. If you not pay, if you don't pay me, I'm just like okay, you wasted both of our time. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna work with you again, and you're not getting the files. Yeah, I feel like you should have somebody like big outside your door, bro, just waiting. Yeah, <laughs> just waiting. Nah, I no. mean, every, I really don't have a lot of problems. I feel like uh, that's you know, dope. You 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 attract the kind of client that you want. And looking at your client roster right now, like with all the people that you just mentioned, like these are all dope people, man. Yeah, yeah. these are all good people. Like like this this scene with with this amount of people, it wasn't around when I was when I was around, man. Nah. it was usually people like how old are you? 27 i had to think about it <laughs> yeah 27 i'm turning 28 lived, in, the... in vegas like your whole life oh yeah Born yes, yeah I, i've been recording people since like well i was recording from like 2007 to like 2000 i think 12 was the last time i did a session yeah. bro we know mostly basically everybody from front to back of the city Damn. so you guys you know? have seen the city yeah. Oh, scene yeah. evolve into what it is now so what do you guys think it's at like is it good you, it's definitely know? gotten a, it's way better way than better. it was bro <laughs> to be honest in the past like two three years mm-hmm. it's grown a lot but like before that cool that's and, that's around yeah, the time yeah. when i really yeah. started mo- like yeah. helping out with the shit too yeah. so i feel like yes i'm a part of this shit yeah i haven't been here for long but i feel like i mean this is kind of like just my opinion but um vegas in general like the actual city itself is uh, still a baby city oh mm-hmm. very me, baby you know? culture wise yeah. bro yeah. we have none of it um no culture and uh, our whole economic system is uh catered to tourism yeah mm-hmm. so it's like we really don't have anything for the people who actually live here nah, it's not but a local I, city and that and that's what i think like the problem is like people complain about vegas but i feel like you just got to realize what state vegas is in and like it being the city like it's not a s- real city yet yeah and once people realize that i feel like People should be going to other cities to like do shows and get their name out there. Like, sure. I don't think you should be relying on Vegas 
to yeah. blow up. Yeah. Because Vegas, like, it just doesn't have the capability to do that. Vegas There's might so take 20 years to do that. Yeah. The only thing yeah, I see gonna, Vegas I, I like good for speed up a is if you have money and you have capital and you can invest into a business, it's a gold mine for sure. Because yeah. this place is about to be popping. No, next, yeah, it's like booming right now. Years. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. the next couple of years. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can see Vegas realizes that too when they're trying to like do other things to uh, build like a different kind of like economic system with the football team and yeah. the hockey team and, and like the, the medical or technology like, field the dispensaries yeah that's uh, yeah i didn't even think about that one of course yeah, dude, there's so much so, happening yeah, right now cbd absolutely. stores opening up everywhere so yeah so when the next recession hits we probably won't be too bad you know if we can actually get this other economic system going so we're oh, not yeah. reliant on tourism i'm you know? hoping there's a recession pretty soon bro yeah pretty soon oh, yeah so i, I can buy I a house I, that soon. I want to buy a house yeah, that's what i'm saying like the housing market <laughs> is the best it's ever been bro well, right i still now. don't have enough even if it's a recession i still wouldn't have enough money to buy a house <laughs> hey it, know, it would be easier how though. Are they it would be yeah. easier though. You know what I mean? Because like, when if you bought a house in like 2008 when it was like at an all time uh -huh. low, you could have bought a house that was like 150. That's now worth like 400. Mm. It's insane, bro. It's gone up a lot. Like even just from four years ago. Like my best friend bought a house. I don't want it to happen so soon. Like, give me like a couple more. Yeah. Yeah. Let me stack, stack up, up a little first. bit. Yeah, because shit's booming right now. You know? like, bro, that's kind of how I feel about Bitcoin, bro. I'm like, hey, wait, 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 wait. Before you go down a little bit more, just, just wait. Just take a couple more weeks. I gotta save. <laughs> wait, so, so you, so you, so you mentioned uh, that you give your all your clients the Pro Tool session, right? No, no, I don't give. Them oh, the you session. don't? No, you don't give them the session. No, I mean, like nobody really asks for the session. I mean, if they ask for it, yeah, I'll give it to them. Mm -hmm. But um. Cause, the, cause no. that's kind of how I relate it to like photography and video. Like, as photographers and videographers, like if somebody asks for the raw files, even though they're paying you for your for what you're doing, you even for like weddings, like if you if you photograph an entire wedding and they ask for the raw files, most photographers and I'll say like 99 percent of professional photographers charge to give you those raw files, hmm. and that's because they run the risk of you putting out files that is that is their work and it's it's misrepresented because it doesn't have their touch on it as far as like the editing and all that stuff goes mm. you know and then you could just I say feel oh like if i was to send a session because uh ali actually touched up on this during mm -hmm. the seminar i would uh just freeze all of my stems so all of the stuff that i would that i did mm -hmm. would still be there and then i'll send them the session mm. Yeah. Mm. so even if they wanted to make changes they you couldn't make too much changes like the reverb will be imprinted on there. The delay will be printed on there. You can't do oh, anything you're, you're, about okay. that. Okay, so so you're talking about printing like the actual into the yeah. waveform? Yeah. Okay. Unless, I mean, I don't know, but um, it, it would just really depend on the situation at that point, yeah. I think. You know? the, but if someone asked me for the sessions, yeah, I'll give it to them. Because like, that's that one, one of the on things. My computer anyways. That, like, that, that's one of the space. things that I kept running up onto is, uh, it, well, first of all, nobody would ever ask for the sessions. Like, you know, when I was recording. But the thing was, I realized that when giving somebody the session, they now had every single trick. And, and you know, everything that I would do editing wise with my, you know, my compression chain, my EQ chain, all that stuff, everything that I was doing, they would have automatic access to. So then they, they can just do their own thing using my exact template mm -hmm. and then never that's have to come you know, same, of course not but it's like if they knew another engineer they could take it there and then i lose i basically uh, okay. lose clientele you know what i mean I so that's what, i used that's to kind be of a, i used to be afraid of that and then i realized like it don't matter it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah it really i like that it's like it doesn't matter because i'm always be learning like shit every single day yeah like, so that that my, that vocal chain is old to me and then yeah. like two weeks now from later you know i used to have this template bro i, I love it it, it takes, more, <laughs> than, it takes more than two weeks actually but like <laughs> it takes what it takes more than two weeks but for me to actually like just get rid of like a whole chain but you know yeah. what i mean like i'm learning something new every day so it really don't matter like I'll, i can give people like the same my, my exact vocal chain everything that i use but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean they know they're gonna know how to use it yeah exactly because there's like a thousand it, it varies like whatever you're processing all those are going to change like by different parameters each little plugin is going to change its parameters by depending on what you're using it on, like what kind of vocal or what kind of signal you're running through it. So when, when it comes to a mix, do you usually do like in the box or do you ever use like outboard gear? Um, I would use outboard gear if I had access to it. Okay. I don't really have access. So everything is pretty much in the box. My vocal chain, I do have like a preamp and a compressor mm -hmm. for my vocal going into the box. But other than that, it's everything's in the box. I was always scared of doing like, of like doing outboard gear because i'm like you're burning that into the vocal right. you know what i mean like what, what if does I, that mean exactly oh yeah sorry uh to kind of explain it like outboard gear is like uh if you have like like a actual physical compressor eq or mm -hmm. whatever and you wanted to mix it mix the vocal as it came into your daw your recorder mm -hmm. it would already so you would save uh processing power and you didn't have to waste that much power you know 
processing the file inside the computer you would do it outside of the computer which is the outboard gear and then they but the thing is it would physically burn it onto the audio file so that if you change your mind like if you do yeah, if you yeah. do like if you have this like reverb on it or something and it recorded that way you can't really take it out i don't know my times I, may have I, changed I think, though i think there's ways around it to where like um i feel like the only thing that's really be pr being printed is like you know preamps and compression and maybe like a little bit of eq but nothing's like too much is being yeah. printed onto it and now people are just routing it out of Pro Tools yeah. back into hardware to go back into Pro Tools. Uh, right. So that way they still have the so flexibility. Yeah. 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 Got it. Plus, if you had like clients in that wanted to hear it, how it sounded um, or how it kind of would sound once it's mixed, so you can, can play compare. it through, the, through that stuff yeah. without actually having to mix it right mm. on the spot or something like that. Yeah. So dope. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know much about mixing too much. You know, I know the basics. Me I neither, produce. bro. It's been years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot everything I used to know. I used to know Pro Tools like the back of my hand, bro. I would like, I would never even use the mouse. It was just Going. all keyboard. Like I knew all, all the, the shortcuts, shortcuts, all the hot keys yeah, and stuff no. like that. I, I, opened up the, I, <laughs> I opened it up the other day, man. And, uh, I was trying to do something and I was using all my Final Cut or my, 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 my Premiere. <laughs> I hate that when you switch yeah. to Oz and you press pressing the wrong shit and it's like, ah, oh, damn. Yeah, you're like, supposed to zoom in. Why are you zooming? Like, yeah. All that uh, weird but stuff. But the man. visual and audio field, I feel like, um, you know, they're not too different. And, and as far as like some of the things go, like, I feel like saturation is a term used in both realms. Mm -hmm. Stuff and it's kind of like, yeah, they have like sure. the same principles and everything like that. Uh, I feel like if you were to get into audio, it probably wouldn't be too much of a learning curve since you know like all the terms and stuff from like the visual field mm -hmm. and stuff. yeah got it and one thing i was gonna ask too just for both of y'all like is when you don't ask me bro i don't know uh, shit <laughs> as dawson um when you when you mix and whatnot like you first go off of like levels and regular like technical aspects of music and then you go off of your ear or do you completely go off of ear at the very beginning when you're mixing and mastering um, and i think it's just a uh the combination of both um i think uh Starting off, I'll, I'll be more technical just to get like a certain sound, you know, just clean everything up. Like yeah. obviously with the vocal, you're always mm -hmm. gonna roll off the low end and shit like that. Yeah, shit yeah, that you're basics, always gonna do, of course. Yeah, no matter what. But then when it comes to like you know, uh, being creative, then that's when I'll use my ear and mm -hmm. just like really just fuck around, break the rules and shit. That's dope. Are people still asking for stutters? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do your stutters, man? Um, it's really easy. You just got to have the, the tempo of the song. I think anything time related, you have to have the tempo of the song for it to sound the way that you want it. That's yeah. not even something I did to like the end of my mixing career. Bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do you a tap to get the tempo? And oh, really? and, 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 yeah. And then, <laughs> I thought you were in stutters. No, yeah. you got to get the tempo. That's the first thing you got to do. I did it by ear, bro. Yeah, I did it by ear. Yeah. yeah, tap tempo, and, and then I realized like right at the end, I was like, "Oh, you could do snap to grid." What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, relative like, grid is my is my shit. Relative like, grid? What's? So oh, it's like, okay. Yeah. It, it'll keep it in line, but it won't snap to the lines. So it's like mm. you can make any kind of cut Ooh. and like keep it in the grid, no matter where you drag it. Yeah. But it won't lock to that line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But when, once you have, I use that for stutters as well. Cause, uh, yeah, I used to I used to place the choruses like uh, manually, and then I realized. Wait a minute. There's ways around this. You can just copy and paste it, and, and depending on how you, because like uh, how an instrumental is laid out or whatever, right. you can just paste it to a certain time period, yes. and then it would just. But you gotta have the tempo. Yeah, yeah you gotta have the tempo. Be, it's gonna be off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so other thing is like, uh, how long have you been at when when you started uh, audio engineering? Would uh, were you producing at the same time and all that? Um, well, I use the term uh, producer. Like, I just started making beats again. I got oh, FL okay, on yeah. Mac and, so, and Ableton. So I'm going to make it a goal to make four beats a week, two on FL and two on Ableton. I'm just trying to get familiar with my DAWs as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, I got to be Dawson, you know. I got to <laughs> live up to my name, you know. <laughs> Master of DAW, okay. And uh, producing, I, I kind of use the word in, like, a, a sense, like, I can rearrange the song it, or like it. you know kind of like give the song more direction more creative direction change this don't do this or mm -hmm. do this that and that's that's kind of how i use producer in my title now. yeah i always get confused bro yeah, it's a pretty like, broad term you know yeah. I like. yeah i was gonna say like if you could define the difference between a producer and an engineer but i think you can kind of just yeah yeah i mean yeah. engineer is kind of like just like like the person putting it together like and there's different types of engineers too you know you have a recording mixing and mastering engineer but nowadays it's usually like all in one yeah. You know. Have you ever watched that movie Sound City? Oh uh, yeah, I did. Bro, yes. finally somebody <laughs> He's I bring been this up, bro. <laughs> I bring this up to every artist it's or a, anyone it's, who's been out here. Nobody knows it's nobody incredible. even knows what Sound City was. Yeah. Pat know? Hunley told me to put on shout yeah. out to Pat. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, it was an all analog studio, man. I, it was kind of like a man, biased they recorded documentary. Though. So many fucking it was legendary. 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 Legendary.
It was kind of like the studio own. was crazy. Like they would like, it was just super unclean. Like they would like pee like in the hallway type shit. Like they said they did that for a reason though. Is it so you wanted to get in there, record, and get the hell out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you wanted you wanted to get down to work and you wouldn't. Right, you know, yeah. Because be when you're around. tracking like that and bands too, you're in there for weeks. Oh yeah. Like just on end. Like yeah. Yeah, bro, they talk about Nirvana. I think having, about like, that a lot, like how easy my job is now compared to what it was, you know, like 20 years ago. Sets and shit. 30 years ago. Oh, let's shit, talk about that know. then. Let's talk about the analog versus digital. Where, where do you stand, man? Where do I stand? I'm obviously digital. You know, I'm DOS, uh, you know, yeah, digital yeah. audio workstation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's really just because I don't have a lot of experience with uh, hardware. I mean, if I did, I'm sure I would be, I would be in love with that because I know there's a certain kind of feel and sound and that you can just get from analog equipment that you can't get from an emulator, mm -hmm. you know? So, I don't know. The emulators are getting pretty good, though. Oh, they are. They're getting super <laughs> good. Because you can actually add tape distortion difference. to it now. Yeah. You can like, add tape distortion to your tracks. Like, whoa. That's I don't crazy. think my ear is trained enough to really tell the difference between an an analog and digital anymore. Bro, you, and, you even know, if your ear was trained, you'd have to have, like, a sound system and acoustically treated environment to be actually hear the difference. Right. Like, I think people overhype on analog even versus in, digital. Even if your ear is trained, it's, like, it still like exists, so obviously it's good enough. Like yeah. they obviously came to terms, like okay, this is a pretty fucking good emulation. Yeah, you know. So wait, so run me through an audio session. My name is is Kim the Dream. I want to book a session with you, bro. You know, I got my, I got this hot fire mixtape. I'm trying to lay down. Okay, what's the process like with you, man? Okay, well, Walk what, are you, what are you looking to do? You just looking to track vocals? You already have beats? Yeah, I got. I downloaded these uh, hipstermentals. You know what I mean? These hipstermentals? Yeah, I'm trying to do all Taylor Swift remixes, bro. <laughs> off, of, off of that, Piff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. You already got the songs written. I got, yeah, all songs Everything's are all written. Yeah, I know exactly what I want. All you got to do is go to www.soundbydawson.com slash book online. Yeah. Book dash online or yeah. junctionsound.com. Uh -huh. It'll take you to the same place. Uh -huh. Book a session. And then, you know, send me the, the instrumentals yeah. and we get to work. Now, let's say I'm in there spitting, bro. I'm doing okay. my thing. You hear it and you're like, uh, you should do it. Do you ever, do you ever put your input as far as like, oh, you, I feel like you should do it this I way. I wait until they ask. Okay. Yeah. You wait until, so you, I have to ask you like, hey man, what did you think about that? Yeah. Okay. Because a lot of the time, you know, a lot of artists, some artists like will tell me like everything they want to do. Yeah. And like. I want which is which is cool, you know, it's fun because um, like I, I like it because sometimes it's challenging, you know, sometimes they ask for or they don't know how to explain what they want. Yeah. And I think that's fun because like it's just kind of challenging for me to like uh, figure out, figure it is, figure it is like what they mean. Like, yeah, like what what are they hearing in their head when they say uh, make me sound wet? Or something like that. <laughs> like, like, Ooh, pause. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Do, uh, Make me sound like I'm in a trash can. Do, like, you do, know, do people ever come in and go like, show you like a song? Like this is, hey, so this is that new Lil Wayne song. I want it to sound like that. Um, n Not as much as people should. Okay. Yeah. So you think people should come in and tell you like, this is the sound I'm going for? It's a general direction, for. you know. It's like, yeah. I, I, I like that as a general direction because it's obviously not going to sound exactly like that. Cause yeah, because they had used completely artist, different. Yeah, you know, like. And um, I think it's a, it's a, it's just a good general direction. It tells me where I need to go with the mix and where everything should be sitting, especially if I have stems. Like, okay, if it's a hip-hop track, like, I want to know, like, is this the kind of genre where it's, like, a, like this distorted, like, mumble rap genre? Like, mm -hmm. does the kick need to be like that? Or is it kind of, like, you know, some other type of genre of hip-hop? Because hip-hop has, like, a lot of subgenres and stuff. So I feel like references are really good, and not a lot of people have them. Mm -hmm. And I think they're good, yeah. Have you but ever... I feel like I can get that kind of sense just if I ask, like, if I have a conversation, like, I like to, like, you know, especially if it's someone new, you know, if they, if it's not, like, taking into, like, too much of their session time, I try to talk to them as much as I can just to get a feel of, like, their music style, you know, a lot of times, like, if I don't know this person, it's their first time booking with me yeah. and everything, I just kind of, kind of go off of it and, like, while they're recording, I'm thinking of, like, how I should be mixing it, but which is something that I really shouldn't have to think about, you know, yeah. I should be focused on the recording and make sure everything's good. But that's why references are important, I think. Yeah, man. That is, it's the same thing with, like, photography or video. Like, if you ever want to, like, do a shoot, it helps if you kind of can show me what it is you're thinking. Like, yeah. what, what's in your mind? Because trying to decipher it, you know, with, with having no physical, visual, audio, you know, representation, it's kind of like, okay, we're just going to, you know, uh, shoot each other, like, you know, shoot blanks or whatever and kind of, like, hope we aim at the right yeah. thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work, like, sometimes. So, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shit, what was I going to say? I was going somewhere with this, bro. Oh, yeah. I had a question. How often does Pro Tools quit on you, bro? Or 
Oh my <laughs> god. When I was working on PC all the time. Really? Now it's like every so often. But it's still Are matches. you on Mac now? Yeah, I'm on Mac now. Man, I I had a Mac my whole my whole life, bro, but like it always froze on me. Really? Maybe I was doing something. Maybe I was just using too much processing power. Maybe. Like, Maybe, yeah. Too Maybe much the... Pornhub downloading, bro. Too, <laughs> probably, bro. I don't, I don't know. What, what's your favorite uh, plug-in I don't right really now? download on porn sites, though. It's everything is streaming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's according to shit when you say that. I'm old school. Old school. <laughs> old school. I'm preparing. Yeah, VHS, bro. Later and shit. I'm preparing for the apocalypse. <laughs> 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 I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's your favorite uh, plug-in to use right now? Um, hmm, damn. Hmm. I used to like this one called Bittersweet. It's a free plugin. Yeah. They just added like a what, kind of, what was it? Like a saturator? Sounds yeah. Like saturator it was like a plugin. tape saturation kind of thing. Okay. It just added that sweet. There was one <laughs> sweet. Uh, that sweet sweet <laughs> sound. There's one called uh One Knob. Remember One Knob? Oh yeah, yeah. You can just it was One was, Knob has like a whole collection now. What? Like they have a whole like. One knob fatter, one knob bigger. So one would one knob, knob wetter, be like the sound goodizer on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or like the, the sausage fattener. Did which you just say sound goodizer? Yeah. Is that a real thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought you were making it up. That's an FL Studio one, yeah. Oh, I never. Uh, right. Yeah, I always fuck up words. So sound goodizer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's the real thing. I thought you were making up words again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Seuss over here, bro. Uh, all right. Still waiting over here. I don't Dawson. know, man. Like, that's, a, that's a tough one. Fuck, I feel like. Shit. The stock What's ones. your favorite reverb? My favorite One. reverb is the Verb Suites Classics from uh, Slate Digital. Oh, so yeah, I pay the the fifteen dollars a month for the Slate Digital bundle. They make you pay for a monthly now. Yeah, but it's not bad. I mean, I feel like anything that I I invest towards like audio wise pays for itself. Yeah, because like without the shit, I wouldn't be able to make money. Yeah, you should One just be able to buy them. Pays for that technically. Yeah, but yeah, but every every month. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I have one. But I mean, it's I like it's Adobe CC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, bro. Sometimes it's get, don't, nah, it's dark. <laughs> not me. No, but I'm saying the, 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 they 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 used to uh used to be able to buy it with just a one time fee. You know, yeah. if it was like a hundred dollars or two hundred, whatever. Yeah, everything is moving that. Even even Pro Tools now. I have Pro Tools 2018. Uh, it's a perpetual license, but I have to pay a hundred dollars to renew it every year. Oh shoot! Damn. But I get free updates, and every time they come out with a new thing, I get it. I feel like updates kind of mess things up, man. You know what I mean? Like well, whenever I think so many people were cracking it, they were like, I'm tired of this shit. Yeah. You know what, I mean? you know what? Like, Actually, you're that. right. I think that kind of steer people away from bootlegging, huh? Is when you have an update every time, they find something else to stop you from bootlegging. Yeah. And then, you, yeah. I'm sure there's... There, they, and it just makes it more money, I think. Yeah. Because I, I used Imagine to know. if you had like thousands of people just paying you X amount every month. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm getting a deal. Time and it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. I feel like I'm getting a deal. I'm like, oh, it's like a loan. Because I, 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 I remember studios. But it I never know. ends though. I mean, yeah. you can, can cancel it anytime you want. I yeah. Mean, and I think you could pick it up whenever you want to. Yeah. So if I wanted to just like, if I was down for a couple months, like, oh, I'm just going to stop paying for this for the next couple months because I'm not going to use it. Yeah. Then pick it up. Yeah, I tried to get back into audio engineering like a year and a half ago, and I and I I think I paid like three or four hundred bucks to because I already had Pro Tools nine, and I think they're on twelve now or or something, right? right? They're on twelve. It's right. Pro Tools twenty eighteen now. That's just it's just that, called twenty eighteen really? now. Yeah. Damn, okay. Well, then, the twelve was the one right before. <laughs> You're that. prehistoric think, now, think, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I just got it. So yeah, and that was from the Mixed by Ollie thing too. They gave you a free copy of Pro Tools. Oh, oh that's tight. Yeah, so if you guys want a copy of that, you got to hit up Dawson. Oh, I'm using that sound by Dawson. I'm using it already. <laughs> hey, you already got the product key registered, bro. <laughs> Absolutely. That's dope, man. Uh, yeah, because I remember back in the day, uh, you used to have, like, we would go into studios with all, and it was usually when they had, like, all the outboard gear and everything, but they would have, like, Pro Tools 8 LE or whatever, but they wouldn't upgrade. Because if you upgrade that thing, you ruin yeah. everything else. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know like all your was plugins? Pro Tools 10 yeah. for the longest oh. time. Yeah. yeah, Pro Tools ten for the longest time. Yeah, because like, like when they made when they went to ten to eleven is when they start making when they stopped making RTAS plugins and started making AAX plugins. So all the plugins oh. that you had, if you moved to a different like Pro Tools eleven, you had to literally buy everything over again. Yeah, like how do you just, feel? They just stopped supporting that format of plugins. How do you feel about about dirty. crack plugins? Oh, man, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't ask me. About <laughs> I, like, okay, next uh, question. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Allegedly. <laughs> nah, yeah, because I remember when I when I was recording people in my mom's basement. I'm dude, getting I there. Have... I'm not to the point where I have everything like bought and paid for. Yeah. I still use crack majority. Of it's in your it's stuff. in your agenda. Like once you are yes, at the level I, where you can pay for everything, the boom, waves bundle that I have is I have everything. So it's like to pay yeah. for that is like I don't have the money right now. He's just yeah, he ain't got I, I, I make plans on doing it though. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. no, I'm just kidding. I, I feel guilty. This is it. all acted. 
this is all fake. This we all, just made all this, this shit. This is up. all allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, allegedly, I have the diamond bundle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh so, wait, I know my my favorite plugin. Okay, um, finally it's the F six, the F six uh, RT. It's like a it's a real time analyzing EQ, uh, dynamic EQ. So it's kind of like a multi band compressor, but it's also an EQ, and I like it because a lot of the time artists will uh, bring me stereo two tracks. Yeah. You know, um, so that means it's like uh, instead of having each individual instrument for the beat, it's all in one file. Oh, Jesus. So um, a lot of the time that's, it's hard to mix a vocal to a file like that. So with this with this plugin, it's like you can use the multi-band compression feature that they have, but just do it for a certain frequency. So every time this vocal, the main vocal frequency, like the fundamental vocal frequency hits above a certain threshold, it'll duck the beat down just mm. just in that frequency range. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like cut carving out a, a space it's like a, for the it's vocal. Like a it's a multiband compressor, bro. Just, just huh? get it. Just get it. <laughs> oh, oh shit. I'm just listening. <laughs> I'm super interested. I, so now you're explaining like it pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So it cuts out like a space, but just for that frequency. So that's mm -hmm. that's the... I guess multiband does do that. I don't know why why it's different and why it's in the EQ section. I, it's in both sections, actually. Anyways, yeah, that's, how, my, that's my favorite. How shit. often would you say a client brings in uh, stems to a track, or do they just usually bring you like an instrumental track, or how does that work? I would say it's like pretty high, thirty percent. That oh. they bring you like an instrumental? I mean, um, I thought you said uh, track okay. Outs. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, it's like yeah, maybe maybe less. I feel like it's probably like eighty-five percent of people bring uh, stereo two-track instrumentals mm -hmm. and stuff. Who who's who's been uh, some of your favorite artists to work with out here, man? Um, out here specifically, yeah. Tej, Zelly, Moose, uh, I am True Star, Fireman, and I'm absolutely 100 percent biased because yeah. these people that I've always worked with. You know, I mean that's but is a, that's an appropriate answer for this type of question, I think. Yeah. Um, well, we don't want to name your entire clientele either. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. But um, yeah, those are my favorite people to work with because that's why I'm continuing to work with them and. They all have projects that are either we're working on. Zelly just dropped a song uh, called Oh My God, produced by Angel. You know, me and Tej got something coming together, I think, October 12th. I'm working on an EP with Fireman. Mm -hmm. uh, True Stars got some stuff, uh, Smoke Break, which is coming out soon. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, someone who I just recently started working with, Asaya. We don't have anything together yet. Um you say Sia? A Sia Ziv. Oh, I thought you meant like Sia, like S-I-A. Like, it should be big. Like the one who did the song with David Guetta? <laughs> like, no. damn, your clientele's growing, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, not yet. I mean, I, I have worked with like a, a few like bigger people in the industry, which is pretty cool. I feel like I'm starting to get there and everything. Mm -hmm. It really is about who you know and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long do, do, does it usually take, uh, how long does it usually take you to mix a song? Or do you do it in studio? Do you ha tell them like, oh, it's going to be a couple of days before I sing the song? Or Um... I kind of mix as much as I can within the session, mm -hmm. and then if they're if they're happy with it, most of the time, like I feel like they are. I don't know. Um, I feel like any mix that leaves the studio to me is a rough mix. If it's yeah. the first time I'm mixing it, it's we only had one session to work on it. I feel like it's a rough mix in mm -hmm. my opinion. I yeah. feel like there's more that I could do, but a lot of time, you know, they're happy with it. You know, yeah, it's more than what they expected a lot of times. So I'm like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You know. I work in like, you know, a template. So I have like all the plugins are pretty much used just to get like a, a good sound first and and then I'll do all the creative stuff and I don't know, I'm just pretty quick with it, like with yeah. the with the shortcuts and everything like that. So it doesn't take me too long. But when I really wanna try and like push myself and when I have stems to a beat and stuff, which is something I don't get often, so I take my time when I have projects like that mm -hmm. so it really it just really depends on the project how long i'm going to take on the mix mm, okay how, how many people sense. come in and like give you beats or just songs to master and mix down and whatnot do you get that a lot or do um, you not i'm do getting it? it more now than, than anything a lot of people um i mean i feel like home recording has been like pretty relevant for like the past couple of years but i feel like more so now i'm getting more home recordings where people just want me to mix it and it's really just a stereo two track and like five vocal tracks yeah oh uh, I was gonna say, can I send you like some of my music, and then you can master it, <laughs> it makes it down. Oh, here's a, here's something we can do. You can talk about what is the difference between mixing and mastering? Um, because I always hear those two terms uh, thrown around back and forth. 
And uh, I feel like people out there don't really know. Like people just say, "Oh yeah, go ahead and mix and master it." Right. <laughs> what like what 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 is um, what's a mix and what's a master? Like what does that mean? Help them out. Mixing, uh, mixing you know is like uh, affecting each individual instrument or sound that's in the project. Mm-hmm. Like if I have a beat, you know, I'm mixing the kick, the snare, the hi hats, the Thirty layers of vocals. Yep. Twenty layers Bass, of ad libs. The keys. The little sounds. All the vocals that's mixing is just taking every single piece and like you know gluing it together to make one cohesive breathing, you know, song. Mm-hmm. And then sure mastering. All heard. Right. And then uh, mastering is a uh, is just taking that song that you mixed and just kind of like I don't know turning bring, it, bring up. it up, <laughs> 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 making it louder. You know, they do like a bunch of like mastering is like a bunch of minor, minor, minor tweaks. That make a pretty big difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, and I want. It's, I like, want... it's making it so it's playable on every single platform on mm-hmm. your phone, your headphones, your laptop, your car, and like so it all sounds pretty congruent all together on each thing that you listen on. Yeah, that's yeah, essentially. Do, do you ever when have you ever you have you ever mastered a, an entire project from beginning to end? Like a whole uh, like a mixtape or something, or no, like or an entire song. project, entire album. Um, cause, yeah. cause w- w- what I used to do is I used to create like once, I, once I had everything, every single a song individually mixed, I would bring every single, like if it was 10 songs, I'd bring them into a master session and mm-hmm. then I would, I would lay them out in different, uh, uh, tracks mm-hmm. and then I would make sure like they're all relatively the same level. I feel like that's um, the right way to go about it. Okay. And I've never done it like that. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, but I have, a, you know, mixed and mastered people's entire projects mm-hmm. and stuff. He just one of them. J Word, I did his. You did that did. that project where where he was like a spaceman with a little gun. Yeah. Damn, bro, that sounded dope. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. A lot of it. those tracks are really like, good. I was mad like, respect to you, bro. Like hell you, yeah, bro. yeah, and especially for how young you are, bro. Oh hell yeah, bro. that's incredible, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm your fan, bro. I'm your, and it's because I'm an audio nerd too. So I like hey. like I I like when I listen to a project, bro. And I can tell that somebody who knows what they're doing has has messed with it. Mm. I hate it when you can hear like it just it, like the vocals are thinny or tinny. You know what I mean? Right, like right. the EQs all over the place. The vocals sometimes you can't hear them because the beats too Hella loud. Hella reverb. Hella <laughs> reverb. Like, or and it's not even the right type of reverb. And I knew what they were going for, but I don't really get it. Like, <laughs> you know? But I when I when I hear it because have you you've mixed for Ray right? It's Ray, yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah. See, people like that, Chell, bro. I can tell that's quality. Yeah. Like, yeah. So everybody hit up Dawson. Yeah. Hey, Dawson. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hit me yeah. up. Trying to get you more business out here on the morning dinner, bro. Hey. Do we get wait, a kickback, bro? bro? <laughs> we, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about hey, it. Hey, you Affiliate should. code. I feel like you should set up like a referral program, bro. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I got 65 clients that I used to work with that can send you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, shit. If you can send to... me 65 clients, like, yes, we can definitely work something. Well, assuming they're still making music, it's been like six years. <laughs> <laughs> They'll give you 10 sure bucks, though. bro. 10 bucks per client? No, per 65. Per session? <laughs> 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 per client not per session <laughs> what what would you say is a is a common error that people make when either either recording music like as an artist or as an audio engineer in the mix what do you think are two common mistakes people make um let's talk about the artist first and then the engine and then the engineer the artist uh, when they're recording yeah um hmm. common mistakes i guess uh proper mic placement but i feel like that also falls on the engineer as well mm-hmm um, I feel like it's a lot of it falls on the the engineer. You I think so? Um, I mean, if you're if you're an artist, you know, make sure you're hitting the notes. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you, if you're a singer, you practice singing yeah. and stuff. And you're <laughs> you don't have to be the best. I mean, that's what you got to engineer for and everything. But um, as far as like recording and stuff, um, for the engineer, you know, mic placement is definitely one of them. I feel like uh, the mix really does come from um recordings and stuff like that. <laughs> you hear that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Sorry, I had to turn you off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what was it, what was I saying? Uh, uh, you were talking about it usually falls on the engineer um, in the mix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the the recording, I feel like is a big part of like the mixing. If you can get the recording to sound good and just like get it to sound good, like with just like leveling it and panning stuff and it already sounds like a song and stuff like yeah that's how you know you have a really good well-recorded song yeah and everything mm-hmm. i feel like that falls on the the engineer as well so just gain staging is something like people Preach. don't yeah people don't uh take what is gain staging, yeah, gain staging is just making sure that you have enough headroom to mix mm-hmm. so it's like zero is like the ceiling and it's like you are the first thing you do like 
uh, when you, because like a lot of artists will bring a, a beat from YouTube and it's already been mastered and stuff like that. So it's already hitting zero. Yeah. You know, sometimes like if you're, Plus it's YouTube. if an engineer doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> he won't even like lower that. Yeah. He'll just start mixing and recording to this loud ass beat. And it's yeah. like, how are the vocals supposed to cut through? Yeah. Damn. When like, you gotta like, that's the first thing you do is just, just turn it down. That's, that's the simplest thing. And then, um, so game staging is definitely important. And then I also think just doing too much. Doing too much as far as like getting carried away with the plugins and the getting mix. Getting carried away with the plugins. And Adding the 12 mix. different and reverbs. I, I honestly feel like less is more when it comes to mixing and stuff. Like when I mix and stuff, uh, I'm trying to just get like the most organic sound out of the signal. Yeah. At first. And then and once it sounds good like that and like everything is good and where it's supposed to need and everything sounds natural, then I'll like, you know, affect it in whatever ways, you know. It depends on the cre the creative direction of the song and like what I'm gonna do to it and everything like that. Now, as an audio engineer, do you ever find yourself uh, getting like? I mean, of course, you said it's if the if the client asks, but do you prefer to get like involved with the artist as far as like direction goes? Because I like to think of an audio as as an audio as engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I can't talk today. <laughs> I like to think of an audio engineer as somebody who can like. Damn, I still can't say, bro. <laughs> I can't say engineer. audio yeah, engineer. Yeah, That's good. probably why I stopped doing it. <laughs> damn, I can't even talk. Uh, I like to think of an audio engineer as somebody who can actually help you like br bring the best out of a song too. Yes. You know, do you, do you find it's 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 uh it's best when you can work with an artist and like give them creative feedback and tell them like, well maybe if you try it this way or do you or do you prefer clients who know exactly what they want they come in there they don't ask much of you. I like both. Both. You know, I, like I was just touching on before, I don't want to do all the work. Yeah. Um, I I like when an artist is excited about their work and they have a creative direction for it and it just tells me that they're passionate and that they're serious about what they're doing and it makes me want to help them and achieve that even more when they show like how excited they are because again you know like i'm doing what i love this is what i'm passionate about this is what i'm always going to do if money were not a thing you know so it's like i'm already passionate when i come in here so if the artist is passionate and you got two passionate motherfuckers making music together like yeah of course i love that but then it's like if you have someone that's cool if you're a new artist and you're just trying it out and stuff and you need creative direction that's cool but if it's like you're just relying on me like you know, just half ass. you know, you're not really caring about, like, the vocal, yeah. you know, all over the place, and you just expect me to turn it into, like, this masterpiece. It's, like... It's better when it's a collaborative... Coll Damn it, bro. Yeah. Like, everybody's <laughs> on that same, dictionary. like, vibration. Everybody's on the same energy level. Yeah. Like, it, it gets you more pumped and whatnot. Yeah. And I was going to say one thing, too. Like, when uh, somebody asks you for input, are you, are you giving them the input on maybe what will match them or something that you just normally do? I kind of just go off feeling. I feel like there's no like right or wrong in these kind of scenarios. And like with a lot of these questions and stuff, it like, I feel like it all just depends on the situation and like um, that person and that client and that relationship that you have with them. You know, some people, um, you know, they're okay with me just stopping in the middle of the recording. Like, no, nope, do that over again. Like, no, that was mm -hmm. not good. Just, they want me to be like, okay, just That's stop cool. me. Don't make me do the whole thing. Yeah. You thought it was shitty. But some people will like, they don't want me to do that, you know? It's like they want to listen to it and do it their way kind of thing. And it just it just really just depends on the relationship. And it just, every situation is different for that reason because mm -hmm. every artist is different, you know? Now, you, you mentioned uh, something very important about uh, how audio engineering is your passion and if money was no object. If you, if you had a billion dollars in your bank account, you would still be doing audio engineering because that's what you love to do, right? Yeah, but so, I would only be working with people I want to work with. Right, 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 right. So, so that okay. So here's the, that's one of the biggest problems that I came into when I was in audio engineering is I started um I started working with a clientele that I wasn't necessarily attracted to or music that I wasn't necessarily liking, and I felt that that affected me personally. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh you know how, how important do you think it is for somebody to uh to to work because do you, do, do you think that affects your work when you're engineering like working on a song that you're not invested absolutely. in you think it does absolutely yeah okay yeah yeah because that's that's one of the things too man because like you know when, when you're working on something that you're just it becomes a job right mm -hmm. you're not interested in it at all it's not your style of music and it's just like you feel like you at the end of the day you could even say it's better for them to go work with somebody else who would be exactly and emotionally invested in it as well right you know like hardcore screamo music or something like, <laughs> or i would even that. say because i have actually recorded my first like it was semi screamo not all of it was screamo but you like it i, I love mean, that shit I, but I mean, it, was, it was it was cool i mean i think over and over again i feel like because it was a half and half like they were singing on it and then it was some screaming ear. parts <laughs> i thought oh. it was pretty interesting though it was that's like, the cool. one I've genre i've never could, done a song like this so. that's the one genre i couldn't do man 
Screamo. I couldn't do Screamo. I love that shit. I could do country, bro. Yeah, I could I do see. hillbilly music. I could do. I can't do Screamo. Hillbilly music. Hillbilly. Well, I don't know what it's called. It's, uh, hillbilly music. It's like the, the white. There's a diss to everybody. So it's in like the, the south. white people version of the Mexican music. <laughs> I could do Mexican music for some reason. Maybe maybe because I'm Mexican, but I can't do like the ring digga dum digga dum digga dum. You know what I mean? I can't with do the banjo that. And with the banjo and everything, bro. Yeah. You couldn't. No. Oh, I, think I swear. I, see, that, that's, I that's, swear. That's, I heard that's one him of the, be. No, bro. That chicken like, and the. I thought you said you could do that. The scream you couldn't. So what could you do that's like not uh, the, your preferred do. genre? What what say it again? Like what 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 genre could you do that's not your preferred genre? Country. Country. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel like that's one of the most underrated like genres, man. People hate on it so much, but I'm like, dude, it's you so, say underrated? It's, yeah. Well, I mean, as I far as like, well, that's no, I mean, as huge. far as like when you ask a random person on the street and they go, "What's the one music genre you oh, don't I like?" I don't like country. But most people are like country, country, country. Can't do it. I like uh, you know, like I don't know the older country folk. But I don't know this new stuff. Folk is, like like fairy tale like huh like folk like fairy, when they fairy, would like, like have a beat and they would just kind of like talk on it yeah. and not even be on beat. <laughs> be like, I went to the store. The yeah, I like that and, shit. Uh, I don't know. I had a homie. Call me a hat. <laughs> yeah, the little cause, <laughs> like, what is it? The harmonica. That shit was tight, bro. Hey, you want to like, come on the microphone real quick? That shit was tight. There you go. Damn, you aggressive ass boy. <laughs> I was just saying, bro. You want to get on the microphone? <laughs> like, damn. Call is, me out. is there is there a maximum amount of people that you can't that you will allow at the studio at once? Or is it always like, or like you said, is it on a per client um, basis where you'll like, you'll book somebody and it's like, oh, it's me I and used twelve to have of my homies. Like, um, it's twenty of us. <laughs> um, it used to be a really prop, like a really big problem on Spring Mountain because we didn't have any AC in there and it was kind of like a smaller room. So it was just like if there was a bunch of people in there and you're not contributing to this project, it's like, bro, hey, what go, are you doing? You're, just making, outside, the, you're just making the room hot. Like, uh, go to one of those <laughs> restaurants around the corner, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like in uh, the movie, what's it called? The Hustle and Flow. Turn turn off that fan, real quick. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't, I don't, get, I don't, I don't get, know I don't what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't remember Hustle and Flow, the movie when they were recording in that? The, huh? Did you watch Hustle and Flow? No, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't watch it. Okay, then you didn't get the reference. <laughs> But yeah, they're basically just recording in a, a hot ass house and like yeah. gotta turn off the fan. And yeah, shit. it's like oh, okay. the same situation. I don't really run into that. <laughs> I don't really run into that. You know that doesn't work, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, and you know, also thing. recording in small places like your closet is like the worst place to record in because then you have muffled sound. Yeah, yeah, and. Y- Nobody bro. tells us this when we're starting, so bro, that's like the even first. That. That's the first place all of us go. Is like we build a booth in our closet. Yeah. Like when we're all starting out, and it's why like is it because it word. condenses it too I much? I don't know. I feel like we give it like the the booth effect. Like we feel like we're in yeah. a booth, and like oh, this is how they do it. But like yeah. a lot of people don't think like in these big ass studios, the the booth is like this kitchen. Yeah. You know? There's also li- this live kitchen. rooms are actually pretty big. You know. Yeah. Is it to get the? What's the reason on it? Um, I more live acoustics like it's more muffled and more dead and you're getting like an instant like at the walls right here you're getting an instant reverberation from your voice going and it's back into the microphone have that feeling to it so it's Ah. like think about like when you when you go into the bathroom and you can just hear this reverb it's just like why are you going to record it like or when you're in a closet you can just hear what it sounds like it sounds like you're in a why do you want to sound like you're in a small box it's like i spend so much time afterwards trying to eq that shit out and i realize oh removing bass i'm High pass filter. Yeah, you know, like that filter. 250 to 300 range, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I realized, yeah, it was it was the booth. And then, uh, so this new spot that I got, it, we're just recording in the control room. And uh, it's it's actually way better. Bro. Way better. Just the acoustics yeah. and everything. It's more live. You don't get that that boxy sound, that that sound that I'm all, and like, it's just like this muffled sound that you yeah. get. Like when you, it's like when you put your hands over your ears and it sounds like you're like inside your head. Yeah. Underwater. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, like, dude. yeah, so like, it, it's better, yeah. You want to know what's crazy, though, is I found that, that it's more relative, man. It's completely relative, to be honest with you. Like, like, look at how good it sounds here. And we're in a freaking kitchen. There's no acoustic treatment in here. It's completely relative to the volume that you speak at. Mm-hmm. So if I speak loud and I'm further from the microphone, you're going to be able to hear the All towel the on the floor. Yeah. But if I'm close to it and I'm talking like this, I could be outside. I could be anywhere. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't, you know, especially with the, you know, the gate and everything. If you know what you're doing, it's going to sound good. Yep. You know, um, my, my first mistake when I was, when I first, when I built my first studio, man, in my mom's basement, I made the, uh, the vocal booth. I literally made it like, like th- three and a half feet by three and a half feet, bro. I didn't know <laughs> what I was doing, but I built it that way. And then I put, I literally put the microphone right next to a goddamn window. 
Oh my god! It was it was a seat like, like two way. It was like a two way window, and then I would record. I'm like, why does it sound this way? Like this, it sounds stupid. Like why does it sound so tinny? Yeah, the reflection. You well, first of all, you get the muffliness yeah. of an actual like small room yeah. that is completely padded up, so it sounds like you're in an anechoic chamber, and then you have the window that's like reflecting, like you get giving you that almost like a post delay reverb kind of thing, man. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, but it's completely relative, man. You learn, man. Absolutely, yeah. you learn for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Unless First. you have like the top mentor to like mentor you through the whole way, like you're gonna have to learn this shit. Like that's just coming from a uh, photography, videography, and I do graphic design and all that. So like, I've ran into so many issues. Mm. Same with you, you know, video wise. Like you shoot oh, in yeah. sixty, you shoot in seven twenty, you fucking shoot in the wrong frame rate, but you learn over time. Right, it's right. just learning. And yeah, I think it's a learning. Experience. You format the like, card before backing up your footage. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, that's, that's another reason why like schools like i feel like you can just learn so much more from oh experience. yeah hands on 100 percent. you know again like i would go to a school maybe if you didn't have the equipment or the tools yep, to experience exactly. on but then again i would only go if i could afford it and i'm not gonna put myself into debt yeah, yeah. but it's crazy because it's so cheap nowadays because like you said everything's on the phone you could get most of the programs on your phone you can buy a cheap ass laptop mm -hmm. and get most of the basic DAWs and shit bootlegging yeah. them mm -hmm. yep. you know plus there's 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 and a lot YouTube, of bro YouTube there, there's a lot of i was gonna say everything. there's so many everything. mentors on youtube bro everything. uh who's that one guy man he makes like rock music he's on youtube uh it's one of the guys i used to i used to listen to he does his like his own rock music too skinny dude uh look he looks like a christian like you know what i'm saying like <laughs> he does christian I rock forgot his name man but there's like so many people on youtube who will literally walk you through like theories of like okay this is this is a chain that is very popular for this kind of music or this is like how you you mix uh you know when you have this many layers of vocals when you stack them this is how i do it this is how i get the sound and like people are just like giving knowledge out you That's know crazy. that you would have to pay a hundred thousand dollars in college to get yep. right there's absolutely like i don't know i just feel like there's no like you said unless you can afford it and it's like not a problem for you definitely go to college because then you get the community of people out there right you get your uh fellow students who are going to be challenging you and kind of like helping you learn along the way you get maybe you get knowledgeable teachers maybe you don't right um but you know that's another thing. do you do you guys maybe have like a tip to like get into the industry or like should you hit up studios and be like hey i want to be an intern absolutely you yeah. know like stuff like that yeah find studios that like close by in your area and just yeah ask for an internship even if it's something like bottom in because like even with internships like they want some kind of experience like i've applied for an internship at, at some of these studios out here and um like then i've never heard from them and i feel like it's because i don't have like a lot of analog uh, equipment experience and everything yeah. like that so even if you can get an internship at a lower level as like a runner or something like that, you're mm -hmm. just in sessions, just yeah. making runs and stuff or cleaning up after the sessions, you know? Yeah. Um, if you can get in like that, then, you know, it's definitely good because, yeah, it's beats paying uh, uh, thousands of dollars in tuition and stuff like that. And you get to learn in a real environment with real situations, which is like the best way. It's like practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you yeah. want to you want know, to be good at something it's like practice as if this is the real thing you know so it's really just real life shit just get in there and do that shit just get you know it. that's why i i do even though like i'm still like paying my student loan for recording connections and shit like i still appreciate the fact that uh i was able to find a studio through them and everything and just learn hands-on and uh and just get thrown into a studio session and just have to figure out like you know how to do everything on my own and everything because i feel like Without that experience, then I wouldn't have been able to go and take that and start my own thing. Mm -hmm. That's real. So if you're an audio so engineer out there that's well. on the come up, uh, you can actually intern for Dawson. Possibly, yeah. Are you, are you yeah, looking? Yes. Are you? Would you ever look to have an intern like in the near future? Um, I feel like I've tried, but um, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't work out like the way I think it's going to work out. Um, I feel like, um, you know, I do have one person who who or a couple people who still come through and they're producers. Like they they mainly produce beats, but they want to learn like the engineering side as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I like having producers uh, in my circle because like that's one thing I'm not so good at. Mm -hmm. and stuff. So you kind of so like teach each other. Kind of yeah, and I get a lot of people who ask me for beats and stuff and it just sucks to have be like, oh, no, nah, I don't have anything for you. So like mm -hmm. I have a couple producers who just like leave me packs of beats and stuff like that. So it's like if I ever come into a situation, I'll just play their beats and stuff. And um, But I feel like the intern thing, I don't know, I, it just doesn't work out the way I – like you would think it would work out. I feel like most people want to intern, like they want to intern at one of those like nice ass studios with big ass That's consoles so stupid, and shit man. like that. Yeah. Like, 
like the, all, all I'm going to teach you is like, I feel like people get bored easily because like they see, they come in like, yeah, it's a studio. It's nice. It's cool. But I'm working off my laptop. Yeah. And it's just like, they don't think it's like something they should be paying attention to or that. Or that's just like what I see. Like when I have people who come in and shadow me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what would you say has been your biggest, uh, your hardest, like, what was it? Your biggest, um, crap. I had the word, dude. I completely hurdle? forgot. I wouldn't say hurdle, but what's the, what's been the most difficult situation for you as an audio engineer? I think that's what it was. I think working out of a new, a new studio with a new client and high pressure situations. Okay. So, uh, ah. I can't really, I have to give a different example. I can't really use that one. Why? Cause you can't talk about it. Not yet. Well, you can talk about the experience. Um, you don't have to mention names. Um, so I think just high pressure situations, like when you're working with really big clients and really mm -hmm. big artists and you're in a new studio and yeah. you don't know how things are routed. Yeah. I think those are the biggest obstacles and like the truest test to yourself as an audio engineer it's yeah. like you're expected to troubleshoot and figure out oh yeah whatever it is and it's like um Damn, i'm still scary. up and coming and like <laughs> i didn't even have like like this was a new studio and like help was limited to me like i couldn't just like call on like the yeah so the, the, there was, there the was head no engineer, in engineer you know yeah. it's like and be like oh wait how do how is this route how do I? it was a saturday he's off <sighs> yeah so Damn. i feel like uh those are the biggest obstacles to overcome yeah but I, I, I love it though that's one that's it. one of the things too man like because I, I i filmed a, a video recently at like odds on or was it on, that's not called odds on anymore what's it called odds on studios the one that's um, in henderson hideout hideout yeah. i recorded a video there and uh the ac was out oh man dude it's the worst the ac was out that's not even an audio engineer thing but the, the but the band, the band was kind of upset with the audio engineer because uh, yeah. he was the only one that was working there you right. know and, and he had, I, I, yeah, I understand that. So I feel that. Because you know, there's nothing blame you can you. do about it. There's Bro, nothing you could do. And that, it's like, well, he ended like, up fixing it. Oh, like, not, not, well, not <laughs> that's himself. That's a real ass that's fucking a real audio engineer, <laughs> bro. Because well, I would have been like, yeah. hey. <laughs> They're like, you have engineer at the end of your name. Big no, bro, it was, it was, it was hot because you know how well treated those rooms are. Yeah, And then yeah, it gets yeah, yeah. warm and then you got a whole band of like seven people in right, there. Right, and they're just a drummer in there. You know how hot he is. Yeah, like. dude. The isolation booth. Goodbye. Damn. Goodbye. Damn, no, but he ended up calling. Salute to that engineer well, because the thing is, that, The thing is, uh, though, uh, the, that studio has like an actual guy who fixes the, who manages the building or whatever. And they had to call the guy who fixes the AC like on his and day off. Like and he came out. He came in on his day off. Oh, he, he came out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would have did that shit. I would have. Yeah. I would have made a phone call. No, I thought the audio thought engineer he, like he's on the roof, like, like, on the roof and shit. He's like <laughs> on the phone. He's like, yo, so what do I do now? He's oh, like, okay. I would have been like, hell yeah, bro. bro, bro he, give that dude a raise. He's actually, he's actually on YouTube looking up <laughs> transducer uh, electric components. He's like, okay, what model is this? Like looking it up. Straight up. Why not? I mean, we're in the information age. We could do it, and I love that too. I love the fact that I'm able to because even. That that's what makes situations like this, like these high pressure situations in a new studio, don't know what how things are going. If I don't know how to do something, I'm googling it, yeah. <laughs> YouTubing it right away. Yeah, and I, I'm glad we have that at our fingertips at least. Yeah, because back in the day we didn't have that. You know, even yeah. us, like we we didn't we weren't able to get information that fast. So if we didn't know how to do something, we're kind of screwed. Right? Yeah, back we in had the day. those uh, books. Uh, like chess for dummies. <laughs> that was like the most informational shit. Oh yeah, yeah, the, like the, all for those dummies, dummies books. That was like, as close as you can get. Yeah, bro. There was no, yeah. But now you can, like, that's why I love, I love the internet so much. Because, mm -hmm. like, if I have a car problem or if I go purchase a car, I look up, like, oh, tips to look for a new car to make sure you're not getting juked. You know what I mean? Or any of that type of or stuff. Or you're about to like, go buy a brand new car and you go, like, what's, what's the top salesman tricks at yeah, the car dealership sure that you should you look get. out for? You know what I mean? <laughs> bro, <laughs> that's, that's smart, one of the yeah. things I'll say is that I would experience. say what's smarter is not going to a dealership unless you're ready for that. Like, starting out, I know I, I wasn't... I'll save up and just yeah. buy a car. Only, buying a brand new car. I'll, I'll say track. two things is the car. Unless you like, have the cash to buy it out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, the good thing is like if you have shitty credit or you have like new credit, like it's good to get a car to build up debt. But if you have stuff to You say do, build up debt? I mean, uh, yeah, because you want to build up debt to get. Cause to that, build, oh, to uh, work on your credit. To, uh, yeah, yeah, build to up pay your it credit. Off and build your credit. Because they love that shit, you know? Yeah. Like credit credit love know, that shit. Man. But realistically, I got in a car accident. Manageable fucking lost. Debt. Lost my car, and I was like, you know what? I was about to buy a nice new one. I was like, no, nah, fuck this. I'm about, about to get a hoopty. Gets me the A and B. I'm out of debt. Like, it feels good. Like, I'm like, damn. Plus, he knows a guy that can fix any, yeah, any problem with it for cheap. <laughs> yeah, so he's got Hit me up. Let know. me know if you ever if you ever get a car. Like, Yes, I actually, I'm, I'm serious. Right after this interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you, man. <laughs> who, who's, who's an artist that, you, that you're looking forward to work for in the future? 
Chance the I worked with Chance the Rapper. Hey. Straight up. That was fast. Yes. Like, damn. <laughs> yes. You didn't even have to think about that one. Why Chance? Uh, he's just one of my favorite artists. And uh, I think what he does, like, he just has a huge influence on the world and everything. And he just uh, resonates with me personally. How old is Chance? Isn't he, isn't he young? 23? 24? Oh, and what was the question? No, you were. Oh, no. Uh, no, I was like, just how old is Chance? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm, I'm not sure how old he is. I think he's like, 20, he's like 23, 24. Damn, he's young. I no, think he's, he's, not, he's not that young. I feel like he's like 26, 26? 27. Oh, he is something. my age, huh? I feel like he has to be. Damn, he said not that young. He he's old a, now. Yeah, we, we're all babies 27 here. 27 is old to you, bro? <laughs> yeah. I feel the disrespect in this room. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> old but fuck. Yeah. Chance is definitely, he's definitely on there, on that list. Uh, you, you said artists? Yeah. Artist-wise? What's an artist, yeah. Because um, well, Chance the yeah. Rapper's not an artist. Obviously, Drake. I feel like a Drake credit would do nice on my resume, you know? Mm -hmm. um, anybody big like that. What about that, a Kendrick, dead person? J. Cole. What dead artist um, would you? Mac Miller. All day. Every day. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yep. I'm actually really sad about that one, that yeah. I never get that opportunity. Yeah. yeah, that's one of those things, man. Like, I, I, I was like... I'm so sad I'll never ever get to meet Michael Jackson. You know? Or Prince. Or Prince. Damn, dude, stop. Yeah. Stop right now. Or uh, so many people. But even bro. for them, like, yeah, they're, they're huge monuments. People who definitely influenced me before I even knew I could be influenced, you know? But Mac Miller is just different for me just because of that personal. Like, I've been a Mac Miller fan, you know, since kids. Mm -hmm. So he was actually a big uh, part of my, you know, music journey. Like, he was like one of the artists I've seen like Bro. blow up from yeah, yeah. nothing like i watched him blow up so it made me realize like oh i can do this shit like mm -hmm. he's the one who kind of like got when me to Mac start him out? and Wiz like 2009 2010 yeah, 2009 yeah, 2010 yeah. yeah wait that that wasn't when he started like no that's when he started rapping well i mean that's like when kids time, and easy easy Mac came out of, like it was like right out of high right when he the graduated. first song i ever heard from him was the one with Ariana grande because that was like his big or that was like the first big song he did, right? Yeah. No. The, the, that feature? No, the, I mean, I mean like, that was, that was on, the on the radio and yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, on the radio. Was, Sorry, yeah, I thought radio. you just meant Mac Miller in general. I was like, I've heard no, of he's him. No, he's, he's had a huge, yeah, huge he's, song. He's been yeah, making yeah. music way before that. Yeah, for sure. But that one was that one got a lot of radio play because yeah. of yeah, Ariana and shit. Yeah, so R.I.P. Mac Miller. Yeah, man. Goddamn drugs. I hate him so much. It's crazy. It's crazy because like that's one of the. This is the only celebrity death that's really affected me in this way. Like, a lot of people really, have said that because as he's so close to our age group too our that age you understand group. like oh shit like that's something that I could see my friends going through or something like that. I if feel they, like a lot had, of people were just genuine fans of him too. Mm -hmm, like a lot sure. of the love that he got afterwards, I don't think it was fake love. You know, I feel like it was real mourning. Mm -hmm. You know, I know like the day that it happened, I had studio sessions like all day, so I couldn't really sit with it. But the next morning, like I, Mac Miller binge. You know, like yeah, straight up, and like, it wasn't cause like I I I was underappreciative when he was alive. Like he was in my fucking playlist every morning before he was dead. like mm -hmm. that morning before like he died. He was in my playlist. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's like anything like that. It's just crazy, man. It's just it just doesn't feel real. I feel like it wasn't supposed to happen. The craziest shit happened to me. It's not really that crazy, but it's just crazy to me. Like I, I I believe in like signs and shit and like yeah, the universe. Yeah. I feel like we do live in like a somewhat of a simulation and like yeah, people are starting sure. to realize that. And um, I had one of those moments the morning he died, which was like it was super crazy. So I got I might as well tell it. Um, so like a couple of weeks before he died, the, um, I'm leaving my apartment and there's like a broken tree. And it was because it was a, a massive storm, like it was a super windy yeah. storm and this, this tree broke. So mm -hmm. I was like, damn. So that's my reasoning behind, okay, that's, that tree broke because the storm before. And a couple weeks later, the day that he died, uh, I have a session at 12, I'm going to the studio, I'm leaving the same gate, and right next to where that tree was, there's another broken tree. And I'm like, what the fuck? There was no storm last night. Like, why is this whole ass tree, big ass tree, just broken right now? And like, all of a sudden, like, shit just felt weird. I was like, like, what does that mean? Like. What does a broken tree mean? Like, why am I seeing this twice in so, such a short period of time? Like, shit just didn't feel real. Mm -hmm. Like, my whole drive to the studio, I'm like, I felt like I was in, like, a game or something. Like, just shit just, I can't explain it. You it had, like, an out of body it was experience just, where you can I see I felt like this was a simulation and I knew it and something was wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, you And then the I glitch. get to the studio. Like, oh, shit. And I get to the studio and I find out Mac Miller's dead. That's and deep. it was pronounced at, like, 11.50. And morning. I left to the studio around that time to mm -hmm. get to my session at 12. Mm -hmm. So it's like it all kind of like happened in that same time frame. 
And then if, so I was telling the same story to somebody else and I was like, okay, let me look this up real quick. Cause I still didn't look it up. And then I looked it up and like a broken tree literally represents death, Yeah. but not just death, like a life being cut short, someone dying too young. That's crazy. And I was just like, what the fuck? Damn. That's deep, that's dude. Deep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So Cause that, yeah. that's how it was like when it rained out, like I like when it rains out, that means somebody passed away. And yeah. Like the, and then the in Pittsburgh, it rained for like, like a fuck? week straight. That's crazy. Yeah. It's real, man. Yeah, Crazy, man. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely something that was unexpected. Like when I first heard about it, I was, I thought it was a hoax. Yeah, I thought it was a hoax. Because you know they I always have, it, bro. Like, they always have celebrity hoax. Yeah, I was like, like God always, damn it, why do people keep posting? I was this actually shit? like, I was actually like, I was like, praying in, it was a hoax. Bro. I was in the was comment section, it, like going like, yo, stop spreading the dumb shit. Like look it up before you. But then before I commented, I I Google like Mac Miller, and then sure enough, it was TMZ, right there, it's TMZ yeah. and everything. I was like, oh no. And I was hoping it was one of those things that was like it would they it was like a pre. They 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 diagnosed it before they actually knew, but it's like no, they they wouldn't do that. Right. Yeah, but R.P. Mac Miller, man. Rest in peace. To go on a more lighter note, man. Uh, what what's some adv- sound advice? <laughs> sound advice. <laughs> what's some sound advice you would Wait, give to like? I don't get it though. Sound advice, like sound advice is like good advice. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. But hey. you're a sound engineer. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. That was before my time. What's your comedy gold? <laughs> <laughs> What's uh what what's some good advice you would give to somebody that's up and coming as an audio engineer and wants to kind of kind of do what you do, man? Where you're kind of like running your own studio, you're doing your own thing, you're building up your clientele. What's a, some sound advice you can give them? Um, definitely just go ahead and get in and do it. Just start. Uh, studio equipment is super cheap. The mics that we're using right now, are how much? The mics that we're using right now? Eighteen. Eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars, bro. You can get eighteen dollar XLR microphones and shit and start recording yourself in your kitchen. And just get, you know, just get to it. Um, obviously, um, try and find an internship, YouTube, start looking up tutorials, um, try and find a mentor, someone who's already doing what you're doing and, you know, just keep it consistent. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. That's some Learn some right there, new man. shit. Buy yourself a good compressor. Yeah. Get yourself an Avalon. Or just learn how to use a compressor. I'll say that. Don't there buy you yourself go. a good, good compressor. Learn how to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Learn how to capture good sound without needing any external equipment. Yeah. Just learn the fundamentals. Step by bro. step. People y'all. skip. Yes. People skip steps, bro. Learn the fundamentals, bro. There's usually EQ and compression on everything. So if you're going to learn any plugins, learn those ones and what they do and how to use them and just learn everything about them. Because if you know how to use those ones, like, you can always get a good mix. You know? Mm-hmm. And if all else fails, send your tracks to Dawson. Hey, hey, you, you, already know. you already know. <laughs> Thank you for being on, man. We really Thank appreciate you for it, man. Me. Thank yeah. you so much. Appreciate it. it was good talking to a fellow audio engineer who's kind of the new, who's in the know. Hell yeah, yeah. man. You're, appreciate it. Yeah. You were an audio yeah. engineer? Shut your, <laughs> shut your dirty little mouth. <laughs> your dirty little high fashion mouth. Ooh. Appreciate you being on, man. I appreciate and, uh, you. We'll- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't go. know what's going on here, but I'm going to just... Uh, We're going to go ahead and post all your information down below in the, in the description. And the- <laughs> Are you laughing, bro? <laughs> uh, okay. yeah, we, we, fuck, yeah. we fuck around with yeah. each other. Hell yeah. yeah. He ain't shit. before you got here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hell yeah. Appreciate you guys. Hell and yeah. until... We'll catch you guys. I forgot what the last word was going to be. Until, until the next, next one. Time. Until the next one. Bye. Later. Say peace, Doc. Peace. <laughs> Every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. In the goddamn refrigerator. I sure am hungry. If you guys want to watch more videos, click right over here where this wall's at. Right there. <laughs> if you guys want to subscribe, just subscribe. Don't watch our videos. Just subscribe. You can click over here this little box over here i'm gonna fondle it i'm gonna uh, play with it right here give it a little bit of love a little bit of tender love and care catch you guys in the next one